Hello. Happy Thursday, everybody. It is Dr. Mitzi Joy. I am your board certified neurologist and multiple sclerosis specialist. And my mission is to um, educate, empower, um, and to also engage people living with MS to uh, become active parts of their healthcare team and to learn more about the importance of clinical research and how they can get more involved. So I hope that everyone is having an awesome Thursday. As you can see, I am listening to Bill Collins, one of my all-time favorite artists, and Sue Studio is like one of my favorite songs. I am truly an 80s baby, um, but yeah, I really like this song. This is one of my jams. And uh, if I had turned on the camera just a few minutes earlier, you would have probably seen my kids running in here to dance because it kind of gets you moving. So I'm gonna just take a few minutes while everybody's kind of coming in and and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so. All right, Phil Collins is my artist of the day. Sue Studio is one of my favorite songs, so. All right, very good. So good evening again. I'm Dr. Mitzi Joy uh, Williams. I am a board certified neurologist and multiple sclerosis specialist. And one of my missions is to engage, educate, and empower people living with MS to become active parts of their healthcare team and also to learn more about the process of clinical research, why it's important, and different ways that they can get involved. So tonight, I am going to talk about how to prepare for your doctor's visit. So this is a topic that a a couple of people asked me about um, in different uh, streams uh, or different conversations on some of the videos I've done before and kind of asked, well, what should I do when I get ready to go to the doctor? So I thought it would be a great topic to address and hopefully you will learn something tonight. Um, so I have many people that I see either as very new patients um, or I have a lot of patients that I also see in follow-up. So the things that you need for both of those types of visits, especially with multiple sclerosis, is pretty similar. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about some of those differences um, as we go along. So good evening, everybody, and let's just hop right into it. So what do you need to be prepared for your doctor's visit, particularly for folks living with multiple sclerosis? So. Whenever you relocate to a new area, um, you might have to establish care with a new neurologist um, for a variety of reasons. So I live in Atlanta and there are lots of transplants in Atlanta. So one of the running jokes is nobody in Atlanta is actually from Atlanta. Well, there are a few, but most of us are not from Atlanta. So I very often have people who will move here for a variety of reasons, whether it's to be closer to family, um, and they will have to establish care with a new neurologist. So what are the things that you need for that first visit with your new doctor. Of course, medical records, right? Um, so tonight I'm going to focus on five tips um, to help you prepare for your doctor's visits. Um, so one of the things that you need is medical records, but those are very often able, um, your doctor is often able to get your medical records from your previous doctors. So if you've ever been to the doctor's office, there's this form called a release of information. And so what will happen is if you sign that, then that gives your doctor permission to go contact your other doctors or other physicians or other hospitals that you've been to and they will send them the medical records now the most important thing that you need for that first visit is your MRIs the pictures okay so whenever people come to see me even if they don't have their medical records if they have their MRIs then usually I can look and see how their MS has been doing most recently and decide if we need new MRIs or at least make sure that I agree with diagnosis, okay? So whenever I see a new patient, I first make sure that I agree with the diagnosis and got to see MRIs to confirm diagnosis, okay? So that means before you move to your new place or even if you're switching to a new doctor in the same town, in the same city, or in the same state, it's very important that you get copies of your MRIs on a CD, right? So back in the day, they used to give you the big films, okay? They don't do that anymore, thank God, because I had lots of lots of films um, stored in the office. They don't give you the big films. They give them to you on a CD, okay? So make sure that you get a copy of the CD with your MRIs on it and take it to your new doctor so that they can see the MRIs, okay? The same goes if you are seeing a doctor you've been seeing for a while. I have some patients that may live 
live several hours away and it may be more convenient for them to get MRIs closer to home or even though there are is an MRI machine in the office I currently work in, sometimes the schedule is booked where we can't coordinate the schedule with an MRI and a visit. So whenever you get an MRI that is not in your doctor's office, make sure you get a copy on a CD, okay? Now, when the people from the MRI place say, oh, but we'll send your doctor a copy, don't believe them, okay? Sometimes they will, but most of the time we don't get actual copies of the pictures, they send the report. So most of the time, the only way we get the report is if you bring it on a CD, in your purse, in your bag, or in your briefcase, or what have you, and you hand it to us when you come to the visit. All right, so number one thing, number one tip for preparing to see your doctor is you need to bring copies of the actual MRI pictures. The files are too big for them. They can't email them or send them to us. Just bring it on a CD and then you will always have a copy of your MRIs for your record so that if you have to move or see anybody else, you have that as part of your medical record, all right? So I can't stress that enough, MRIs, copies of the MRI CDs, okay? What else can you do to prepare uh, for your doctor's visit? All right, a list of your medications, right? This is becoming increasingly important as we get more disease-modifying therapies for MS. There are some of our medications that may interfere with some of your other drugs. So it's very important to have a complete list of your medications before every doctor's visit so that we can update those, make sure that we're not prescribing similar things to something another doctor may be prescribing you because sometimes there's overlap between uh, people who may see a neurologist, they may see a pain specialist, sometimes their primary care doctors may prescribe medicines that other physicians prescribe. So we want to make sure that we're not giving you too much of the same thing or giving you things that will be very similar or have additive side effects. So a complete list of your medications and the doses is very important, okay? And every time you go to the doctor, they can give you an updated list of the medicines that they prescribe for you, all right? So having that is very important. Sometimes I have people that bring the bottles, so if in doubt, you can bring the bottles, but sometimes it's a little difficult if you bring a big bag of like 20 bottles and then spread them out, it might take a little longer than if you have a list. So if you can bring a list, that will be great. If you have to bring the bottles, bring the bottles and at least we can sort it out and see what you're taking. Make sure that none of the medicines for your MS are interfering with other medicines that you're taking, all right? So you need to bring those MRIs, you need to bring a list of medications. What else can you do or bring to prepare for your doctor's visit? How about a list of questions, all right? So I encourage all of my patients to keep a list of questions. Um, some people bring a notebook, some people have it in their smartphones, because smartphones are kind of smart. Um, some people will bring someone else who has the list of questions with them, um, but it's important to bring a list of questions. Now, if you bring your doctor 30 questions, okay, we may not be able to get to all 30 in a limited period of time in an office visit. But if you rank at least the top three to five things that you would like to address, it makes sure that when you are finished with that office visit that you've accomplished some of what you would like to accomplish because it's important to have goals in mind when you go to the doctor. So we want to make sure that you're getting your uh, issues and your questions addressed. So make that list of questions. We try to get through as many as we can. Um, and if there are ones that we can't get to, then we may need to schedule another visit to follow up and look at some of the rest of those questions. All right, but keep that list of questions because how many times have you gone to the doctor, you go through the visit, they go through everything and then the doctor walks out and then you say, oh, I forgot to ask. Or you get to the car and say, oh man, I wanted to ask about blah, 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 blah. And you might not see your doctor again for six months, okay? So make sure that you have those things written down in whatever place is convenient for you so that you can ask those questions. Um, there's a really good article that I was reading. Um, I did a presentation at our consortium meeting. Last year, the Consortium of MS Centers is a really cool interdisciplinary meeting where there are doctors, nurses, psychologists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and everybody kinds of meets together and talks about different topics related to MS and things that affect all of us and most importantly affect people living with MS. And so I gave a talk about the importance of teamwork with MS 
MS and kind of the components of a team. And there's this group called MS in the 21st century, and it's a steering committee um, made up primarily of people who have MS, um, and they primarily are folks uh, from Europe at this point in time. And so they had a really good article about different things uh, that are important uh, to make sure that interactions between the doctor and the patient are meaningful and useful to both the provider as well as the patient. So I think, you know, it's important to know that there are, that you can have goals and objectives to get out of your visit and to make sure that the concerns you have are addressed, all right? So keep that list of questions, try to rank them in order of the top things that you want to address or issues you may be having, um, and make sure that you ask those questions while your doctor is with you um, so that you don't have those aha moments when you get back to the car. All right, and then um, one of the other things or uh, people that you can bring with you to a visit to help prepare you for your visit is to consider bringing a care partner. So if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen me talk about the fact um, that it's very important to have other people involved in the process of your care for MS, and it's also important um, to have those people at least sometimes come to some of your doctor's visits. Why? Because they may remember some things um, that you wanted to address that maybe you forgot to put on your list, um, or maybe you forgot your list, right? So um, it's an extra set of eyes to kind of see everything that's going on with you and an extra set of ears to hear what the doctor is saying um, so that you guys can go over it when you get home. But even more importantly, it's an extra set of eyes that has been able to see how you have been doing in between your doctor's visits, right? Um, one of the interesting or challenging things about MS is that all of the symptoms um, we may not be able to see in a routine doctor's visit. If you've been living with MS, you know that there are some symptoms that get worse the longer you do activity, right? And so everything is always great when you come to the doctor. So you may have been having a limp for five weeks and when you get to the doctor, your walking is fine, right? That's just how it always happens, well, a lot of the time. So, you know, there's somebody else there who can kind of help give a different perspective of how you may have been doing and help kind of reinforce if you've been having trouble doing things over a longer period of time. And also they may recognize or be able to see things that you may not even see. So if you're having difficulty with your memory, they may be able to give some additional insight into how you've been doing over time. I gave this example um, when I was in uh, Houston last week. Um, I was given a lecture um, or I was given a talk to uh, uh, an amazing group of patients there. And so I was talking about the importance of care partners and how they can provide input and I was talking about one of my patients and so she had come in and she had come in with her husband who always comes with her and they're really funny we were cracking jokes and and so the husband was like well tell her tell you know tell me tell Dr. Williams about that time you fell and she was like I didn't fall and he was like yes you did you fell and she was like no I didn't he's like you fell in April you fell and she's like no and so they went back and forth for like three minutes and then finally she was like oh yeah, I did fall, right? So again, not to say that you don't tell the truth on purpose, right? Um, but sometimes they can't remember those fine details, especially if there's like a six month period or a year in between the time you see your doctor, that care partner can provide that additional information that can help us as physicians um, work with you and partner with you to make decisions about your care and about your medication. So things that always should be addressed at every visit, okay, are your medication, your disease modifying therapy, if you're on disease modifying therapy, are you able to tolerate the medicine, okay? Are you taking the medicine like you're supposed to? And if not, what are the challenges to you taking that medicine? Maybe that means you need to sit down with your doctor and come up with a medicine that may be more convenient for you to take or come up with strategies to help you be able to take um, your medicine more regularly, all right? Other things to address, um, MRIs, which um, often are done on a yearly basis. Sometimes they're done every couple years or sometimes every six months, depending on what point you are at in your journey with your MS. So it's important to address your MRIs, okay? Are those staying the same? Are they uh, getting worse? Um, and then uh, assess if you've had any progression. So when we talk about if we believe that medication is working, those are the three things that we look at. We look at you in terms of are you having relapses? Are you having progression? And then we look at your MRIs, all right? So 
tips to help you prepare for your doctor's visit. All right, again, kind of running from top to bottom. Number one, bring those MRIs, okay? I don't care what they say to you at the radiology place. Get them to give you a copy on your C of, of your MRIs on a CD so that you always have those for your records and so you can show them to your doctor when you go to that visit. I would venture to say that's one of the most important things you can do is bring those MRIs, okay? So we can lay eyes on them and see them and not rely on someone else's report, okay? So bring those MRIs to that visit, okay? If it's a first visit, medical records are important, but if you don't have the medical records, the doctor can get those, but bring those MRIs. Okay, number two, list of medications, an accurate list of medications. As I said, as we're getting more new disease-modifying therapies, some of them can interfere with some of your other drugs that you may take for blood pressure or depression or other symptoms. So it's important for us to have an accurate list of your medications to make sure that they're not interfering with your MS drugs. It's also important for your doctor, your neurologist, to have an accurate list of your medications because so many doctors pres prescribe the same types of drugs. So I don't want to give you a muscle relaxant if your pain management doctor is already giving you a muscle relaxing or your primary care doctor is already giving you that. So we want to make sure that we're not double prescribing things or prescribing things that interact. So that list of medications is very important. If you have to bring the bottles, bring the bottles, but a list is better than the bottles. Okay. Number three, bring your list of questions and concerns and try to rank them in order so that you can at least address the top three or four things that have been going on with you or questions that you have for your physician, okay? So you can have goals when you go to the doctor's visit. That is okay, all right? We have goals as physicians. We wanna see what your exam looks like. We wanna see what your MRIs look like. We wanna make sure you're taking your medicine, but you should get something out of your doctor's visit, okay? That's very important. And we won't know if you have issues or concerns if you don't tell us. So write that list of questions. We may not be able to get to 30 questions questions, but we certainly can get to three or four, okay? So list those top concerns, bring that with you so that you can address those at your visit. And then the next one is bring a care partner, right? Because they may be able to see things from a different perspective, provide more information to your doctor about how you've been doing. Sometimes they will tell on you now. I call some of the spouses that uh, come with my patients truth tellers, but that's okay because it means that they care about you. They want the doctor to know really what's going on with you so that we can make good decisions together about your care and make sure that the plan we have is a good plan and if we need to adjust then we need to come up with a new plan okay and finally um, things that should be addressed or talked about at every visit are your disease modifying therapy if you're taking it okay how are you doing are you able to take it? Are you having any challenges with being compliant with the medicine? Is the medicine making you sick? Are you able to tolerate it? Okay, so we wanna talk about those things so we can make sure that what we're doing is still the right thing to do, or if we need to switch the plan, then we need to switch the plan. And I always tell people my two rules of thumb because I have two thumbs, okay? One is if it ain't broke, don't fix it, all right? So that means if you're doing well, then generally we keep doing what we're doing, okay? But the other one is the plan is not written in stone. So that means if we come up with a plan, okay, and there are challenges that we can't navigate or can't seem to overcome, then we need to come up with a new plan, okay? So it's okay for your doctor to have objectives for the visit, but it's also important for you to have goals and have objectives of things that you want to get out of your doctor's visit. So with that being said, I will wrap up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So I talked about a couple of tips to help you prepare for your doctor's visit. Um, my name is Dr. Mitzi Joy Williams, MD. I'm a neurologist and MS specialist, and my goals are to engage educate and empower people living with MS to become active parts of their healthcare team and to learn about the importance of research and how they can get involved. So follow me on my social media handles. Obviously, if you're looking at this, you're probably on my page, Dr. Mitzi Joy MD on Facebook. I have the same handle on Twitter. Um, also on Instagram, D-R-M-I-T-Z-I-J-O-I-M-D. Um, and also, um, 
I have a YouTube page, so if you want to follow my YouTube page, it's the same handle, Dr. Mitzi Joy with an I M D. And so, um, please reach out, please leave comments. If you guys have topics that you want me to discuss, um, I will try to address some of those. Certainly, I want this to be helpful for you all. And please feel free to share the video if you think the information is helpful and if it will help anyone that you know who has MS. Um, and I hope you all have an amazing and wonderful Thursday evening. And I will see you guys. I'm going to take next week off because I will be attending our big MS conference in Berlin next week. So we have a annual uh, European conference, which is one of our really high science meetings. So I'll be hopefully a little bit smarter, maybe a little jet lag, but a little bit smarter when I come back. So I will not be doing my live stream next week because it'll probably be the middle of the night over there. Um, but I will do it um, when I come back the following week. And hopefully I will give you guys a little bit of an update of some of the things that I learned at the meeting. And um, again, please feel free to reach out if you have questions. Uh, topics um, that you like me to address and I'll try to get to some of those um, and I hope you guys have a great evening all right have a great one guys we'll see you in two weeks okay so a same bat time same bat channel not next week but the week after that all right have a great one